this evening. Government minister gives reasons why no confidence motion was invalid. Mother of three allegedly attacked by husband. Man in police custody dies in intensive care unit. In the region, nine-year-old Jamaican girl runs successful soap business. And internationally, Palestinians protest new social security tax law. Greetings to our viewers in Guyana and around the world. Today is Tuesday, January the 29th, 2019, and this edition of Headline News is now being streamed live on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you for joining us. A Luzignan man succumbs to injuries he obtained at the Sparren Dam lockups. However, Bibi Bacchus tells us that according to police, the fatal injuries were self-inflicted. A 39-year-old man died in the intensive care unit of the Georgetown Public Hospital on Monday night. This was after police reportedly brought him from the Sparanam police station in a bloodied and unconscious state. Kali Churan Sirwak was picked up by police on Thursday, the 17th of January, after his sister made a report to the police station that he was behaving in a disorderly manner at the family's home. Sewak was expected to appear in court on Monday the 21st, but his sister was surprised to find out that he was not there. Upon inquiry, she was informed that he was in the ICU at the Georgetown Public Hospital. It is alleged that the man who was intoxicated at the time of his arrest started to hurt himself by banging his head on the cell door and walls, which prompted officers to place him in a cell alone. He reportedly continued hurting himself, which resulted in him being seriously injured, hence taken to the GPHC. The family of the now dead man is looking for answers. A post-mortem examination is expected to be conducted on Wednesday. A thorough investigation is to be conducted by the Office of Professional Responsibility. Headline News, Bibi Bacchus. Thanks, Bibi. The peace of this morning was broken after one man in Eccles allegedly beaten and stabbed his ex-wife. Esther Sobers spoke to the family to piece together the details of the story. Another woman has fallen victim to an alleged act of domestic violence. Unika S., a mother of three, is in a critical condition at the hospital in Georgetown. The incident took place Tuesday morning at Eccles Old Road, East Bank de Arara. Unica and her reputed husband, Kevin Smith, also known as Trini, were seeking relationship advice from Unica's aunt, who said that Kevin had wanted to reconcile with his wife by using a spiritual intervention. They all came. We had a discussion. She never mentioned nothing about the infidelity or nothing. All we should say, Auntie, Trini said you're going to some OB man for me and please stop him. I said, Trini, don't go to nobody. Leave this girl. This girl don't care. Go move on with her life and please leave this girl alone, right? And they left. It was at that point when the couples left Unica's aunt's home, an argument ensued on the road. Mark Robe, Unica's cousin, who was present at the time of the incident, recounted what transpired. The fight in the broke me right down here, like he starts stabbing her with the scissors, all in her neck, back of her head and so. She had to come far in this rain right here, so. And he spotted this little bloody scene, and then she ended up falling, he ended up coming back, started beating her in her head with a, with a big word. So that was the end of it till the police come. And so. Unica and her husband, who shared a union for over eight years, have three children together. According to family members, the young mother had left her reputed husband's home several weeks ago and was living with her mother in Bagastown. Meanwhile, Smith also noted that the stabbing incident unfolded unexpectedly in front of him and others who didn't want to intervene while the stabbing occurred. Come on the drain, stagger like, you know, walking, I walk, fall in here, get her back, come to the road, fall along right down there. And he came back from up the road with a piece of wood and started lashing his head right, right on, the, on the road there. You know if anyone tried to render assistance? No, no, nobody didn't want to intervene in it, because we all, you know, aggressive towards the situation so nobody didn't want to intervene and get knocked out. Ain't you no know, peacemakers normally end up being dead. So they didn't want to in intervene in them. And I didn't want to intervene in it. I stopped from Taylor the car and watching the whole thing happen. Until he leave and gone then I got to see assistance and I try assisting she, you know. 
with everything. Unika was taken to the hospital while Smith fled from the scene. However, up to press time, the police are in pursuit of the suspect. For Headline News, Esther Sobers. Thanks, Esther. Police are making stringent efforts to apprehend the driver of motorcycle CJ5283 who abandoned his Honda motorcycle and fled the scene of a fatal accident yesterday on the Nimes Public Road, West Bank, Demerara. And Cruise revealed that the motorcyclist who was proceeding south along the eastern carriageway of the road at a fast rate of speed allegedly struck down a 72-year-old pedal cyclist, Hubert Caesar, of lot 9596 Nimes Public Road, West Bank, Demerara. The 72-year-old was rushed to the Demerara Regional Hospital in an unconscious state and was pronounced dead on arrival. The body is at the Ezekiel's funeral parlor awaiting a post-mortem examination. Don't go away. Coming up after the break. Government minister gives reasons why no confidence motion was invalid. And Guyana judiciary gets an upgrade. But first, here are today's foreign currency exchange rates. For the latest in news from Guyana, the region, and beyond, visit our website, headlinenewsguyana.com. Having trouble at home or at the office? Then call the professionals at Action Cool. Our fully trained technical team have the skills and experience in repairs of all air conditioned units, refrigerators, gas stoves, washing machines, and a whole lot more. For further information, visit us at 86 Hill and Princess Street, Mandela Avenue, Georgetown, or call us on telephone number 225 7867. Need a ride around town and beyond? Look no further than Oasis Ride Taxi Service. With affordable prices and some of the best drivers in the business, we've been delivering prompt and reliable service to Guyana for over 16 years. We also offer tours, chauffeur service, and even car rentals. You can call us at 231-5554 or 225-5594. 5496. For deals, specials, and more information, find our page on Facebook. Always this ride taxi service. Let's go.
welcome back. Following a conference with parents of the institution on Monday, the CEO of School of the Nations, Dr. Dexter Phillips, decided to continue to suspend classes and engage in extensive consultations with security professionals. The school has since brought on the services of Delta Security Services, Inc. Sheriff Security Service is also being utilized after they offered their services to the school free of cost. The debate surrounding the no-confidence motion may have another surprising twist. Minister within the Ministry of Finance, Jaipal Sharma, claims that the Constitution has no provisions for such a motion, and to prove it, he is even willing to take it to court. Here's Wendell Jeffrey. Today, Jaipal Sharma invited Channel 2 Headline News for an exclusive, where the junior minister within the Ministry of Finance is arguing that the Constitution of Guyana does not allow for a no-confidence motion. I believe personally in Jagdeo, Dr. Jagdeo, the former president of this country and leader of the opposition, would wink the entire National Assembly and the Speaker in believing that the opposition can bring uh, a no confidence motion. Junior Minister within the Ministry of Finance, Jaipal Sharma, is convinced that while the arguments currently before the Chief Justice acting in relation to the no confidence motion, while they are valid, Minister Sharma is arguing uh, that there are more cogent points that can be argued. For instance, the Minister is suggesting that there is no such thing as a no confidence motion. He says that the Constitution of Guyana does not allow for the argument or for the challenging of a no confidence motion. The Constitution no way speak about a no confidence motion, but a vote of confidence. And a vote of confidence can only be brought by the government. The coalition came to power because of a prorogation of the PVP government under Donald Ramachar, because they were challenged with the same no confidence motion. If Jagdeo knew that there was no such a motion, why did he allow for a prorogation of the government when he knew that he could easily have argued that there is no such motion? This is a good question, and I can't answer for the incompetence of the PVPC. An attorney, the very night of the vote, called a press conference. The Prime Minister, who was acting as the President, who is an attorney by profession, called a press conference. Seated around him, were senior attorneys, including the Attorney General and Legal Affairs Minister, Minister. the Minister of State, Joe Harmon, and President all of these attorneys, Raphael Trotman, listened as the Prime Minister agreed that the government had fallen on a no-confidence motion. And here you are, a junior minister without legal um, training. Would you similarly accuse your government of being incompetent, like Jack Dio's government was incompetent, or Ramatar's government was incompetent in 2015? You said all what you said, and you put to me um, to make a statement in relation to my government. I'm going to say this. The speaker is also a attorney at law, a senior counsel, and he made that mistake. No one is perfect. Minister Draper Sharma presented Channel 2 Headline News with a copy of the National Assembly debates for the sixth sitting, where the minister, the Honorable, now deceased, Rupu Demand Prasad, explained that only the government can bring a confidence motion against itself. I quoted him. So that a vote of confidence so that a vote of confidence see is an important step if that vote that motion is defeated defeated is the operational word here defeated the president This evening, government minister gives reasons why no confidence motion was invalid. Mother of three allegedly attacked by husband. 
man in police custody dies in intensive care unit in the region. Nine-year-old Jamaican girl runs successful soap business. And internationally, Palestinians protest new social security tax law. Greetings to our viewers in Guyana and around the world. Today is Tuesday, January the 29th, 2019, and this edition of Headline News is now being streamed live on Facebook and YouTube. Thank you for joining us. A Luzignan man succumbs to injuries he obtained at the Sparren Dam lockups. However, Bibi Bacchus tells us that according to police, the fatal injuries were self-inflicted. A 39-year-old man died in the intensive care unit of the Georgetown Public Hospital on Monday night. This was after police reportedly brought him from the Sparanam police station in a bloodied and unconscious state. Kali Churan Sirwak was picked up by police on Thursday, the 17th of January, after his sister made a report to the police station that he was behaving in a disorderly manner at the family's home. Sewak was expected to appear in court on Monday the 21st, but his sister was surprised to find out that he was not there. Upon inquiry, she was informed that he was in the ICU at the Georgetown Public Hospital. It is alleged that the man who was intoxicated at the time of his arrest started to hurt himself by banging his head on the cell door and walls, which prompted officers to place him in a cell alone. He reportedly continued hurting himself, which resulted in him being seriously injured, hence taken to the GPHC. The family of the now dead man is looking for answers. A post-mortem examination is expected to be conducted on Wednesday. A thorough investigation is to be conducted by the Office of Professional Responsibility. Headline News, Bibi Bacchus. Thanks, Bibi. The peace of this morning was broken after one man in Eccles allegedly beaten and stabbed his ex-wife. Esther Sobers spoke to the family to piece together the details of the story. Another woman has fallen victim to an alleged act of domestic violence. Unica S., a mother of three, is in a critical condition at the hospital in Georgetown. The incident took place Tuesday morning at Eccles Old Road, East Bank de Arara. Unica and her reputed husband, Kevin Smith, also known as Trini, were seeking relationship advice from Unica's aunt, who said that Kevin had wanted to reconcile with his wife by using a spiritual intervention. They all came, we had a discussion. She never mentioned nothing about the infidelity or nothing. All we should say, Auntie, Trini said you're going to some Obi man for me and please stop him. I said, Trini, don't go to nobody. Leave this girl. This girl don't care. Go move on with our life and please leave this girl alone, right? And they left. It was at that point when the couples left Unica's aunt's home, an argument ensued on the road. Mark Robe, Unica's cousin, who was present at the time of the incident, recounted what transpired. The fight in the block went right down here, like he starts stabbing her with the scissors, all in her neck, back of her head and so. She had to come fall in this rain right here, so. This part of this little bloody scene, and then she ain't gonna fall in, he ain't come back, start beating she in her head with a, with a big word. So that was the end of it till the police come. And so, Unica and her husband, who shared a union for over eight years, have three children together. According to family members, the young mother had left her reputed husband's home several weeks ago and was living with her mother in Bagastown. Meanwhile, Smith also noted that the stabbing incident unfolded unexpectedly in front of him and others who didn't want to intervene while the stabbing occurred. Let's come on the drain, stagger like, you know, walking, I walk, fall in here, get her back, come to the road, fall along right down there. And he came back from up the road with a piece of wood and started lashing his head right, right on, the, on the road there. You know if anyone tried to render assistance? No, no, nobody didn't want to intervene in it, because the way how he, you know, aggressive towards the situation so nobody didn't want to intervene and get knocked out. Ain't no peacemakers normally end up being dead so they didn't want to intervene in them. And I didn't want to intervene in I stopped from Taylor the car and watching the whole thing happen until he leave and gone then I got to see assistance and I try assisting she you know with everything. 
Unika was taken to the hospital while Smith fled from the scene. However, up to press time, the police are in pursuit of the suspect. For Headline News, Esther Sobers. Thanks, Esther. Police are making stringent efforts to apprehend the driver of motorcycle CJ5283 who abandoned his Honda motorcycle and fled the scene of a fatal accident yesterday on the Nimes Public Road, West Bank, Demerara. Inquiries revealed that the motorcyclist who was proceeding south along the eastern carriageway of the road at a fast rate of speed allegedly struck down a 72-year-old pedal cyclist, Hubert Caesar, of Lot 9596 Nimes Public Road, West Bank, Demerara. The 72-year-old was rushed to the Demerara Regional Hospital in an unconscious state and was pronounced dead on arrival. The body is at the Ezekiel's funeral parlor awaiting a post-mortem examination. Don't go away. Coming up after the break. Government minister gives reasons why no confidence motion was invalid. And Guyana judiciary gets an upgrade. But first, here are today's foreign currency exchange rates. For the latest in news from Guyana, the region, and beyond, visit our website, headlinenewsguyana.com. Having trouble at home or at the office? Then call the professionals at Action Cool. Our fully trained technical team have the skills and experience in repairs of all air conditioned units, refrigerators, gas stoves, washing machines, and a whole lot more. For further information, visit us at 86 Hill and Princess Street, Mandela Avenue, Georgetown, or call us on telephone number 225 7867. Need a ride around town and beyond? Look no further than Oasis Ride Taxi Service. With affordable prices and some of the best drivers in the business, we've been delivering prompt and reliable service to Guyana for over 16 years. We also offer tours, chauffeur service, and even car rentals. You can call us at 231-5554 or 225-5594. 5496. For deals, specials, and more information, find our page on Facebook. Always it's Ride Taxi Service. Let's go.
back. Following a conference with parents of the institution on Monday, the CEO of School of the Nations, Dr. Dexter Phillips, decided to continue to suspend classes and engage in extensive consultations with security professionals. The school has since brought on the services of Delta Security Services, Inc. Sheriff Security Service is also being utilized after they offered their services to the school free of cost. The debate surrounding the no-confidence motion may have another surprising twist. Minister within the Ministry of Finance, Jaipal Sharma, claims that the Constitution has no provisions for such a motion, and to prove it, he is even willing to take it to court. Here's Wendell Jeffrey. Today, Jaipal Sharma invited Channel 2 Headline News for an exclusive where the junior minister within the Ministry of Finance is arguing that the Constitution of Guyana does not allow for a no-confidence motion. I believe personally in Jagdeo, Dr. Jagdeo, the former president of this country and leader of the opposition, would wink the entire National Assembly and the Speaker in believing that the opposition can bring a, a no-confidence motion. Junior Minister within the Ministry of Finance, Jaipal Sharma, is convinced that while the arguments currently before the Chief Justice acting in relation to the no confidence motion, while they are valid, Minister Sharma is arguing that there are more cogent points that can be argued. For instance, the Minister is suggesting that there is no such thing as a no confidence motion. He says that the Constitution of Guyana does not allow for the argument or for the challenging of a no-confidence motion. The Constitution no way speaks about a no-confidence motion, but a vote of confidence. And a vote of confidence can only be brought by the government. The coalition came to power because of a prorogation of the PVP government under Donald Ramachar, because they were challenged with the same no-confidence motion. If Jabdio knew that there was no such a motion, why did he allow for a prorogation of the government when he knew that he could easily have argued that there is no such motion? This is a good question, and I can't answer for the incompetence of the PVPC. An attorney, the very night of the vote, called a press conference. The Prime Minister, who was acting as the President, who is an attorney by profession, called a press conference. Seated around him were senior attorneys, including the Attorney General and Legal Affairs Minister, the Minister of State, Joe Harmon, and all of these attorneys, Raphael Trotman, listened that the Prime Minister agreed that the government had fallen on a no-confidence motion. And here you are, a junior minister, without legal um, training. Would you similarly accuse your government of being incompetent, like Jack Dio's government was incompetent, or Ramatai's government was incompetent in 2015? You said all what you said, and uh, you put to me um, to make a statement in relation to my government. I'm going to say this. The speaker is also a attorney at law, a senior counsel, and he made that mistake. No one is perfect. Minister Draypal Sharma presented Channel 2 Headline News with a copy of the National Assembly debates for the sixth sitting, where the minister, the Honorable, now deceased, Ripu Demand Prasad, explained that only the government can bring a confidence motion against itself. I quoted him. So that a vote of confidence so that a vote of confidence see is an important step if that vote that motion is defeated defeated is the operational word here defeated the president and the cabinet shall resign let us go back to december 20, 21st 2018. What was put there? A no confidence vote. Was that no confidence vote defeated? It was passed. The government shall bring this vote of confidence. If they are defeated, then they shall resign. Minister Sharma told Channel 2 Headline News that if the government does not take up this challenge 
of this confidence motion that he will secure an attorney and that he as a private citizen will challenge this motion in the high courts. I give the information out there. Some senior counsel, some young lawyers should take it up. If they want me as the respondent, I will be a respondent. Right? So I just could provide the information. I only could, you know, lead the horse to the water, can't force them to drink it. I given them I given them all the water, the ammunition to survive. But I took an oath and my only reason to doing what I'm doing is not to embarrass anyone. But I'm doing my job because I took an oath to uphold the constitution. Minister Sharma likened former President Barajak Dio to the emperor that had on no clothes in that sage old story. He said that the former president was able to convince his PPP members, as well as this current government, including senior luminaries, that his argument, Jack Dio's argument of a no-confidence motion, is valid. Minister Sharma said that he knows that there is likely to be some fallout, but that he is not too concerned about that. He said he knows that he is not an attorney at law. However, as a minister of the government, he said he swore to uphold the constitution. And so his push to have this matter looked at in court is as a result of his constitutional right and upholding what he swore to uphold, which is the constitution of Guyana. George, if it were left up to Minister Jaipal Sharma, his argument is that this government should never be removed from power because of a no-confidence motion, if only because there is no such thing in the constitution as a no-confidence motion. The minister says that if he, uh, if, the government, if the current administration does not take up the case, that he himself will secure an attorney and as a private citizen, he will bring a case to the High Court arguing that the, the Speaker of the House erred, Dr. Bartland Scotland erred, when he entertained the motion of no confidence in as much as the Constitution does not provide for such a motion. For Channel 2 Headline News, Wendell Jeffrey. Thanks, Wendell. The Guyana Judiciary has gotten an electronic upgrade complements of the Government of Canada. Here's more in this report. The Government of Canada has donated 10 digital recording units to the Guyana Judiciary. The Acting Chancellor of the Judiciary, Justice Yannick Cummings Edwards, thanked Canada for the donation and explained how the gift will help with the advancement of the course of justice in Guyana. We have to advance. And we have to embrace change, which, bring, which brings benefits. We have started the transitioning to digital recording of proceedings in our court. And Juris Project has invested time and resources to that process. And to this end, they have donated 10 recording units to the Supreme Court. According to Chancellor Cummings Edwards, the Jurist Program is expected to donate an additional 35 units. This is a regional judiciary reform initiative funded by the Government of Canada. The Jurist Project began in 2014 and is working with judiciaries in the Caribbean region to support their own efforts to improve court administration and strengthen the ability of the courts, as well as the judiciary, to resolve cases efficiently and fairly. Don't go away. Coming up after the break. Nine-year-old Jamaican girl runs a successful soap business, and Palestinians protest new Social Security tax law. But before that, here's this week's Bridge Attraction Schedule.
is really hot. What's wrong with your AC? It's not working. Well, we wouldn't be able to continue this meeting anymore because this place is extremely hot. Wait, wait, wait. Please don't go. Here's a company you can call to get your AC fixed. Action Cool. Honey, what's the dinner? I had a hard day. I'm sorry you have a hard day, but guess what, babe? I didn't cook today because the stove is not working. Having trouble at home or at the office? Then call the professionals at Action Cool. Our fully trained technical team have the skills and experience in repairs of all air conditioned units, refrigerators, gas stoves, washing machines, and a whole lot more. For further information, visit us at 86 Hill and Princess Street, Mandela Avenue, Georgetown, or call us on telephone number 225 7867. Need a ride around town and beyond? Look no further than Oasis Ride Taxi Service. With affordable prices and some of the best drivers in the business, we've been delivering prompt and reliable service to Guyana for over 16 years. We also offer tours, chauffeur service, and even car rentals. You can call us at 231-5554 or 225-5594. 5496. For deals, specials, and more information, find our page on Facebook. Always it's ride taxi service. Let's go. Welcome back. Now we take a look at news from the region. A nine-year-old girl in Jamaica is running a successful business selling specialty soaps. Here's TVJ Primetime News with more. Age holds no limits. It's a fact proven by Shanna Alexis Colley, a nine-year-old who started her own business out of a want her parents could not satisfy. She wanted to go to camp and I said to her, $30,000 for camp is a lot. And she said, you know what, mommy, I'm going to earn it. And she did just that. Doing her own research, Shanna Alexis came up with an idea she believed would help her make enough money for camp. That is, making bath soaps. With confidence and financial assistance from her parents for startup, Shanna Alexis made her first batch and rented a spot at her first pop-up shop. She sold all of them. Um, she made a whopping profit. With the camp fee earned and change to spare, Shanna Alexis decided to turn her idea into a business, which she operates from the comfort of her parents' kitchen. Cutting, melting, and mixing with her secret ingredients, the fifth grader specializes in custom orders for bridal and baby showers. Jacinth Morgan Colley says her daughter was always business-minded. She always says she has to own her own businesses. She says her daughter's initiative has encouraged her to be her own boss too. My nine-year-old stepping out there, taking orders, all of these things, um, not wondering what the world has to think, not wondering to say is this going to work, and just that sense of hope that comes and it has really helped us too. But though she has her own money now, Shana Alexis says she doesn't want it all for herself. Since people are always donating to children, I thought I could donate to the elderly. Both believe no idea is too wild, 
and is encouraging others of all ages not to limit themselves. Age is, it's, it's significant. I, I don't like when people say it's insignificant, it's just a number. No, it's not just a number. If it is that you have a dream, work out a plan. Do whatever it takes that is legal and correct to ensure that you can live your dream. You won't always succeed on your first try, but keep on trying, you'll succeed eventually. Thinking long term, this moneymaker is already making plans for the future. I plan on opening malls, first indoor ice skating rink in Jamaica. I want to be a doctor, a dancer, a singer, and an actor. And how she plans on doing this? I'm not sure, but I know with God all things are possible. With a ray of hope, I'm Ken Morgan. And in international news, interim president Mahmoud Abbas Fattah's party has frozen the implementation of the Social Security Act pending cabinet confirmation. This comes as part of an announcement from Abbas's Fattah party that it wants to set up a new government. Al Jazeera's Harry Fawcett reports from Mamala in the occupied West Bank. For months now, Palestinians in the occupied West Bank have been protesting with a frequency and in numbers that haven't been seen in years. Not against the Israelis, but against the Palestinian Authority over its plans to impose a social security law involving a new compulsory contribution from workers, many of whom don't trust that they'd get the money back in the future. Now, President Abbas's Fatah party has announced consultations on forming a new mode of government consisting of factional members of the Palestine Liberation Organization and in doing so has frozen the implementation of the Social Security Act pending cabinet confirmation. What uh, clearly we have today is giving the blessings of uh, such recommendations regarding formulating a new government. Yet uh, we will wait for the cabinet tomorrow uh, and the announcement of the cabinet. For an insight into just how unpopular the measure has become, just talk to people like Mohammed Amr and his wife Mara. Mohammed works for the national insurance company, Mara's a psychologist. They started out married life in a small rented apartment and with loans that need servicing. I have 100 to 200 dollars left every month after we've paid everything else. When this social security law deducts 7.2 percent of my salary, that's more than 150 dollars. So it takes away from my daily life, my kids, any extras, the basic things I need to live with dignity. The idea of a safety net for Palestinian workers, enshrining sick pay, redundancy protection and pensions is not in itself unpopular. But people here have become ever more suspicious of the authority's ability to deliver and not to use their future pensions to cover current budget shortfalls. The Palestinian Authority has been trying to implement a system of social security since 2003. But yet again, even after expressing its determination to get it through this time, it has stepped back. There was significant opposition against some of the elements of the policy. For example, its discriminatory aspects against women. But above all else, there has been a widening deficit in one vital commodity, trust. Political analyst Khalil Shaheen says there's no reason to expect that to change in the immediate future with the very system of governance up for grabs. So how can you talk about dismantling the uh, Palestinian Authority and in the same time you will try to convince the people in that they, their savings will be in after two decades, for instance, are safe and they will get it back. Mohammed Amr says he doesn't even trust that this latest freeze on the scheme is real. Until he sees an official proclamation from the president himself, he intends to keep protesting. Harry Fawcett, Al Jazeera, Ramallah. Here's the three-day weather forecast.
And that's Channel 2 Headline News for this Tuesday evening. As we take our leave, we invite you to find Channel 2 Headline News on Facebook, YouTube, and our website, headlinenewsguyana.com. You can also tune in 6.30 tomorrow morning for a rebroadcast and Wednesday evening at 7 for more news. For now, I'm George Gonzalez, signing out from your newscast saying, thank you for welcoming us into your home and do have a blessed evening.